This may be an unpopular video. I'm going to talk about five reasons why you shouldn't buy an integrated amplifier. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and prepare to maybe get mad at me. Integrated amplifiers. They are everywhere. What is an integrated amplifier? Well, it is a piece of equipment that has volume control. It has input selection and oftentimes has an integrated DAC, which is a digital analog converter, and maybe an integrated phono preamp. They are extremely convenient. They're pretty. It's just one box, not junking up everything. And they're ubiquitous. Most companies have heavy integrated amplifiers in their lineup, if they have integrated amplifiers at all. Like Pioneer, Onkyo, they're kind of Denon, Marantz, they're kind of heavy into home theater receivers, which is cool because that's what people are buying. But most audiophile companies, even if they concentrate on audio mostly, sell integrated amplifiers. They don't sell a ton of separates. And I think as customers, it does all of us a disservice. It can get much better. But as customers, I don't think buying an integrated amplifier is going to give you or me the best musical fidelity experience. Numero uno, they're expensive. I know, hear me out. They are really expensive. Most companies sell through a dealer network. And if a dealer network is selling a component, means they have to make money, right? I'm not begrudging anybody making money. People should be able to make as much money as they can. However, let's say a component is $2,000, $2,000. That means the dealer, for the most part, in most situations, I know some people have different margins. I know some companies have different selling prices. Most of the time, a $2,000 integrated amplifier is $1,000. So the dealer will be making $1,000. Again, I'm not saying dealers shouldn't exist. They should. They provide a service. They have value. However, that $2,000 integrated amplifier is actually a $1,000 integrated amplifier if the dealer wasn't involved. Moreover, the company itself has to be making money. So the components inside the integrated amplifier, like the DAC, like the phono preamp, those aren't going to be the best components out there. And I know some people are gonna say, what about synergy? The amplifier section matches the preamp section. Eh, I don't always agree with that. And if it didn't, you wouldn't know anyway. So one is going off of just an overall sound. And they can't really determine whether or not they need to upgrade their DAC, they need to upgrade their phono stage, they need to upgrade their amp section, which in many, most, almost all cases, you can't upgrade your amp section. So I think integrated amplifiers are expensive. Now there are some outliers like Emotiva. I think they offer a great integrated amplifier in the TA1 and the TA2. However, there's ways around that that I would suggest. You don't get to choose. Your freedom is stripped from you. Your freedom to choose your amplifier. Your freedom to choose your preamp. Your freedom to choose your DAC. And your freedom to choose your phono preamp thing. As I just said before, you're locked in. You have no idea. And I get this question a lot. What should I upgrade? I have an integrated amplifier. A lot of times I have no idea what to say. It's pretty easy with DAX because anything that is an integrated amplifier, seriously, less than $3,000, you can probably upgrade the DAC with something around $200 and you're going to get a better DAC. I know that's hard to believe, right? But you get a Topping E50, you get a Gishelli Labs J2, even a Schkit Modi at $120 is probably going to sound better than the DAC in your integrated amplifier. Some integrated amplifiers will say, hey, this is the DAC chip we use. A lot of them don't. And if they're not saying what DAC chip they use, if you have to really dig down deep for it, probably means that DAC chip is pretty inexpensive. It's not all about the DAC chip. I get it. It's mostly about the analog output stage. However, DAC chips do make a difference. And if they're not screaming from the rooftops, the quality of their DAC chip, chances are it's 
probably pretty cheap. The phono stage, you also don't get to choose that. So again, you have no idea what the phono stage sounds like. You do have extra analog inputs, so you can start buying those components and adding them in later if you want to, and that's somewhat of an upgrade path. But for the most part, one is going to get in, one's gonna get into way better sound, way cheaper, if they just go separates from the beginning. I know, that's kind of intimidating, but in the long run, I think it provides a more enjoyable experience. You don't get to mess around with your amp, in most cases. Some products do have pre-amp outputs, and that's good. Emotiva TA1, TA2, I think Parasound, a lot of those have pre-amp outputs. Some, some integrated amplifiers have pre-amp outputs. And if you're going to get an integrated amplifier and you have to get one, I would get one with pre-amp outputs. The Denon PMA 600NE, no pre-amp outputs. Luckily, that one sounds pretty good as it is. But if you have pre-amp outputs, eventually you can change to an external amplifier, amplification fire. Let's give a for instance, you get the TA1 from Emotiva. I think that comes in around $600. Later, you wanna up your game a little bit. So you get, you get the XPA, Gen 2, Gen 3, I don't know, two channel for a grand. And all of a sudden you're listening, and you're like, hey, this, this sounds a lot cleaner. Hey, there's a bigger sound stage. Without preamp outputs, you don't ever get to add another amplifier. That stinks. This one might get me in trouble. Power supplies, cables, okay? So here's the deal. If you have separates, let's say you have a separate DAC. Let's say you have a separate phono stage. Let's say you have a separate amplifier, separate pre-amplifier. You can upgrade the power cables for each component. Some people say power cables don't make a difference. In my experience, they do. I'm not saying you're wrong if you don't think they make a difference. Fine. Some people think the earth is flat too. Okay, that might get me in trouble because some people actually might think the earth is flat. But you're wrong. Anyway, some people don't think cables make a difference. I'm not saying you're wrong. If you believe that, fine. They're not going to make a difference. I forgot what I was saying. Anyway, if you have all these separate components, you already have separate power supplies, which can be a huge benefit with crosstalk, with interference, with a whole bunch of things. Some integrated amplifier companies go to great lengths, not great lengths, some of them go to some lengths to actually kind of cordon off each section because they already know that if you have everything just jammed in there, there's going to be some issues with interference with noise and things like that. So by going separates, you already have separate power supplies. By going separates, you can add additional things like cables, like even linear power supplies for your DACs and your streamers. So it opens up a ton of freedom to be able to upgrade things. And with separate power supplies in almost every situation that I've had, it has improved the sound even when the components all added up together are less expensive than the integrated amplifier. You're locked in. You're stuck. Whereas if you already have a separate system, then you can upgrade the DAC as you see fit. You can upgrade the phono stage as you see fit. You can upgrade the streamer because some really expensive integrated amplifiers have a built-in streamer. You don't have the choice to upgrade anything. And if you have a streamer, and if you have a DAC in there, some of that technology changes. Streaming changes fairly quickly. By getting an integrated amplifier, a fancier, a fancier one with an integrated streamer, I really wouldn't recommend that. Because yeah, it's got a fancy, it's really pretty, shows the album art and everything, but you can't upgrade it. Maybe some, some people are making modular stuff, but I think again, that's the outliers. It's not the mass market integrated amplifier. I just think people are better off going separates from the beginning, especially with the price of separates now. Even if you get a preamp, it doesn't mean that, basically if you get a preamp that has an integrated DAC and an integrated phono stage, you're kind of still stuck. The only thing is you get a 
a separate power amplifier, which you can change around if you want to. I would suggest if you have to get an integrated amplifier, get one that doesn't have a DAC, that doesn't have a phono stage, and it has preamp outs. And that may be a bit of a unicorn because those aren't just falling off the shelves everywhere. If you're gonna get a preamp, maybe not get one with an integrated DAC and amp. Maybe just get an analog one like the Freya from Schkit. This is the Freya N. Actually, I like it a lot. The Akatika, that's a kit. Or the Saga, that just has analog inputs. One can get a preamp and still add additional things, but you're already paying for stuff on the front end. So you're paying for the DAC, you're paying for the phono preamp. However, if they're pretty affordable, like the offerings from Emotiva, it's not that big of a deal. And if you just want to have everything now, and you don't really want to figure out exactly what DAC, exactly what phono preamp you get, you can kind of ease yourself into separates by getting a PT1 or a PT2, something like that from Emotiva. It'll get you started. But I think long term, if you're going to be in this hobby for a long time, I think separates is the way to go. I think integrateds are overpriced. I think they're too confining. And I just don't like them because separates at lower prices sound better in almost every situation. And if they don't sound better, you can get components to make them sound better and satisfy your individual needs as an audiophile because we're all different. There are great integrated amplifiers out there that sound pretty good. But for me, for my journey, listen, I got 30, maybe even 40 more years of being an audiophile. And I would rather long-term have it be cheaper by having separate components than continue to chase the integrated amplifier. Ooh, I got an integrated amplifier. What should I step up to? And I get that question a lot. I almost always say, don't step up to another integrated amplifier. Upgrade your DAC, upgrade your phono stage, upgrade your streamer, and then go buy separates. Because if you're continuously chasing the better integrated amplifier, I don't think you're ever gonna find it unless you really step up to a $3,000 range. But then when you get up to that range, it's got a lot of electronics in it. I think people are just better off buying separates. May not be a popular opinion, but it is mine. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio. And every Sunday night, we have Patreon-only Zooms, Patreon-only Discord, Patreon-only Facebook group. You can also sign up for Amazon Music, Rune. Links in the description, title too. Even if you quit, I do get a couple of dollars. You can also buy some merch. This isn't merch. This is a free copy mug I got. You can also use the thanks buttons down by the share button. Give me, buy me a cup of coffee if you want to, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, maybe upgrade that integrated amplifier to some separates or get a new DAC or a new phono stage or a new streamer and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.